back to the Stop the Violence Podcast. Here at the Stop the Violence Podcast, we appreciate you coming back. Whether you're a vegan, a non-vegan, or a hater, hater with an eight in the word, we are glad that you are here. Did you know it is still January 2021, which means you can still sign up for Veganuary. So if you aren't vegan yet, if you're still paying for the death and cruelty and torture of animals, don't you want to have a New Year's resolution of not doing that anymore? Veganuary.com. It's always linked in the show notes. Sign up for that shit. Oh, yes. Wait, the whisper, the lovely bit whisper you just heard is Keegan, and he's giving me a weird look right now. Why are you giving me a weird look? I'm not giving you a weird look. <laughs> I'm letting the people know that they need to sign up for Veganuary. Because well, it's the least they can do. What are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? That's a great question. Well, I'm going to be talking about 4-H, and you're going to be talking about... I don't know. What am I going to be talking about? You're going to be telling rescue stories. Rescue stories. Of animals rescued from being slaughtered. I have rescued animals. And he's got stories. Okay, let's get onward. We're going to talk about 4-H first. But wait, first, I just want to mention that my podcast is now on YouTube. It's going to be on my YouTube channel, Alicia Demi, A-L-I-S-I-A space D-E-M-I. Um, I know some people rather listen to things on YouTube, so I'm I'm a little bit behind, but I'm gradually uploading all the episodes that I have already onto YouTube. And also, of course, there's Spotify, and then there's also Anchor, and I think that's it. Um, I think it's on Apple Podcasts, but I don't have any listeners on there yet. But it don't matter. I don't care where you listen. Alrighty then. So I'm on the Wikipedia page for 4-H, because Wikipedia is okay to use for definitions at the very least. And it reads, 4-H is a a U.S.-based network of youth organizations whose mission is engaging youth to reach their fullest potential while advancing the field of youth development. Its name is a reference to the occurrence of the initial letter H four times in the organization's original motto, Head, Heart, Hands, and Health, which was later incorporated into Fuller Pledge officially adopted in 1927. In the United States, the organization is administered by the National Institute of Food and Agriculture of the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA. Apparently, they also have 4-H in Canada. But it says, The goal of 4-H is to, v- to develop citizenship, leadership, responsibility, and life skills of youth through experiential learning programs and a positive youth development approach. Though typically thought of as an agriculturally focused organization as a result of its history, 4-H today focuses on citizenship, healthy living, science, engineering, and technology programs. They say that they allow for personal growth and career success. The 4-H motto is, quote, to make the best better, end quote, while its slogan is, quote, learn by doing, end quote. So I cannot read these definitions and goals and claims without, like, laughing or mocking it because... What this organization actually does when it comes to the livestock part of it is they have children raise an animal, whether it's a cow, a lamb, or a pig, or something like that. They have children, like young children, raise an animal for about a year or so, and they care for them, they train them, they feed them, they groom them. They develop a special bond with them only to send them off to market and literally send them off to be slaughtered. And they make money off of the animal. They sell the animal. They slaughter them. If you Google right now, like 4-H kids crying, there's loads of photos all over the internet of kids crying, holding their cow friend, their sheep friend, because they know that they're going to go be slaughtered. I believe... It is child abuse just as much, or almost as much as it is animal abuse. So, like, how dare they make these claims? It's so ridiculous. 
What is positive about teaching children to not have compassion? So let's be honest. Uh, I, I don't know too much about 4-H. Um, Alicia has taught me a lot about this buff stuff, but it seems like the main goal of this organization is to desensitize these children, to get them while they're young, to make them understand, you know, what has to go into where their food comes from, but showing it almost as a necessity, which is the biggest issue that, that I think we have with this is they're basically putting these kids through trauma you know and saying that it's necessary but it's completely not yeah and you'll hear like i play a few clips of people that are doing 4-h and explaining themselves and a lot of things that they say throughout this organization when asked about like oh aren't the kids sad when they send the animals off they always just say oh that's just how it is it's just like that's their that's their explanation for everything like wow <laughs> So I found this news clip on YouTube. It's called Viral PETA Video Causes Stir with 4-Hers, and it's clearly very biased, and we want to just react to that right now. A controversial video gaining steam online has 4-H and FFA supporters rallying for their organizations and how they educate kids. Tonight in Moville, some local families are moving their animals into the Woodbury County Fairgrounds. The fair gets underway tomorrow, and for many families in Siouxland, 4-H is a way of life. So a way of life. So let's think about this for a second. If your way of life is abusing animals and putting them through death and suffering, why are we trying to perpetuate that system? What about the life of the animal? Yeah, that's a way of life that should probably be ended, just like human slavery used to be a way of life and anything else. That's why a posting online saying 4-H is hurting animals and kids, even going so far as to call it terrorism, strikes a nerve. It's not terrorism. It's you show them and then after pigs, after you get dying, brings them up, loads them up, and takes them to slaughter. But you, that's part of life. You got to eat. How are you going to get your meat from? Well, let's just, let's just make one thing crystal clear here. You do not need meat ever, ever in your diet, ever. So putting these animals through this and just to say, oh, well, this is the way of life. You got to get your meat. Well, why not just do the alternative and not kill them and not raise them into a hellhole environment and just let them live and then eat fucking plants? Yeah, exactly. And the news reporter, who's clearly very biased, said like, claiming that they're hurting animals you're hurt you're slitting their throats if that's not hurting i don't know like what realm of denial you're living in and they say that they're hurting they're hurting the kids too well that's true too these kids are emotionally attached to these animals i mean that's the natural way of a kid we're raised to love animals and of course they're gonna cry and they're gonna get hurt and they're gonna be upset when they have to send them to be murdered Mm -hmm. And even the ones that don't cry or if they're like keeping it in, they're just putting on a front to try to be tough or to try to be a real man if they're a guy or to try to be like a tough girl if they're a girl. Yeah, because we all know as, you know, speaking from experience as a male, we are taught to keep our emotions inside. It is, it's a sign of strength, which is completely ridiculous. Crying shows strength. It being does. true to yourself, being true to your emotions, actually living those emotions and not just putting a mask on. That is not manly. Being manly is being true to yourself and sticking up and speaking up for animals. Yes, protecting the vulnerable. I don't believe that it's terrorists. It's great family involvement. It just gives the kids a great opportunity to learn how to take responsibility for their animals and enjoy time with family enjoy time with family spend time with the animals well why what what better way is there to spend time with animals than an animal sanctuary where these animals are actually living out their autonomy by themselves and they don't have the fear of getting stabbed in the back or even stabbed in the throat you know yeah. i mean this is ridiculous there's plenty of work to do on a sanctuary to teach kids responsibility cleaning stalls feeding the animals 
Every year, thousands of kids in Iowa alone participate in 4-H. Livestock judging gets underway at the Woodbury County Fair tomorrow. And it's a busy... Livestock judging? So, so Alicia, I think you have to explain to people a little bit about this. Like, what, what is this livestock judging? So, they take their animals that they've been training, and they take them in a ring, and they walk them around, and... I think they sometimes do this or maybe always do this without halters. They just have like this guide stick and they pose them in these weird, funky ways, kind of like dog shows. Dog shows are also cruel, by the way. Um, but they they blow dry these cows. They make them all clean. They make them all pretty. And they're judged on basically how valuable they are for the meat industry, whether as like a breeding bull or as meat and and then they auction them Interesting. And, and the person who buys them sends them to slaughter sounds like sounds like um you know 200 years ago in america slave <laughs> auctions sounds very familiar exactly and this shit's still going on exactly all right so now i have a youtube video pulled up that we're gonna respond and react to called 4-h livestock show and market auction and it's this like mother and daughter explaining like what they're doing for 4-H. So 4-H is really important. Um, I know there's not a lot of 4-H videos out there where people advertise that they're selling animals for slaughter or they're raising animals for market. Um, it's a really hard thing to post online because you get a lot of negative comments. And a lot of negative comments. I wonder why. And, you know, you get a lot of hate for it, but the thing that these people don't understand is how much these kids actually really do love their animals. Love their animals? Hmm, what do you have to say about that, Alicia? You, how do you send someone to have their throat slit if you love them? And by the way, it's not hate. Like, trying to protect animals from being killed is not us being haters. It's us trying to protect animals. Like, if you were wearing a certain outfit and we were like, your outfit's ugly, you suck, that's a hater. But saying, please don't kick that dog or please don't kill that animal, that's just someone trying to protect an animal. And it's sad you can't see that difference. And it's really hard for them to get rid of them. And yeah, you can say, oh, sell it as a pet or do this and do that. But that's you not, can't. you can't. Well, you could, but. Swine, you can't. Right, swine, you can't. But the problem is that that's, uh, livestock are not, like, sure you can have some that are pets, like, Danny's you. Danny she, could be a pet. Yeah, like, she could live in the house, she yeah. loves <laughs> So why, what, what is it for those watching that aren't vegan? What, ask yourself, what it is it about the livestock animals, quote unquote, that, you know, what, what features do they not have? What qualities do they not have? What, what characteristics do they not have that dogs, cats, other typical companion animals have that they're, that they, that, you know, what's the difference? Yeah. What's the trait that a cow has that makes them deserve to have their throat slit? but the dog doesn't have. Yeah, and it's funny how they're literally saying, oh, they can't be, they can't be pets. I don't like using that word because you can't, it proves ownership and you can't own another being. In 2021, this is ridiculous. Like, there, you can't own another being, ever. This That doesn't happen. But we're keeping her. Some of you can keep um, to be producers, but like a lamb like Felix, he's a weather, which means he can't have, but he can't produce children and you can't really do anything else with them. So that's what you do is you raise them for meat. Really? There's nothing else you can do for them, huh? Well, why not, you know, you know, send them to a sanctuary or not breed them into existence in the first place? Yeah. Breeding animals is basically condemning them to a life of slaughter and i like how they say to become meat like they can't even be honest about what it actually is it's, yeah. it's murder stop it's using meat. euphemisms exactly right? i know like, your daughter's young but she knows what this is this is murder and death and it's not taking them to market it's taking them to sell their bodies to be slaughtered uh, same with the steers. Steers cannot produce children, and you, what farmers do is they pick out the animals that will grow the best weight, but that aren't necessarily what they're looking for for breeding stock. So then your steers 
or your bull calves become steers and then they are raised for market or as 4-H projects like in Noro's case. But anyways, so there is not a lot of positivity around 4-H, I don't think, um, in the YouTube world. So we're really wanting to branch out and talk about that and share our experiences. <laughs> nice. Well, I wonder why you're not getting a lot of, you know, praise for you abusing animals. Interesting. Yeah, I think that even non-vegans can look at this and see that it's child abuse. Because you don't give kids choices most of the time. And I'll explain that more later. But you don't give kids choices on what they do at the end. You force them to sell them for meat. This one. Nice. <laughs> and, you know... It's, I think it's a really educational thing for these farm kids. So I get it. Like if you are vegan or if you are, would you like, he keeps farting. <laughs> so if you're against, you know, all that kind of thing, that, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Well, let's think about one word that she said there, education. Now, if this is all about education, why aren't they showing the slaughterhouse footage? Why aren't they taking the kids to the kill floor and watch them and watch their friend that they love get their throat slit? Yeah. You tell me, you tell me that they want to watch that. Yeah, I don't think so. And I like how she gives us permission that it's fine to be vegan. Why wouldn't it be fine to be vegan? Being vegan just means you're not hurting animals. And if you're aware of veganism, because let me tell you something, I used to ride horses. And when I was riding horses, I had never heard the word vegan in my life. But you're aware of veganism. You've probably had vegans talk to you and educate you about veganism. So the fact that you're aware of it and still choosing to be cruel, knowing that you don't have to, knowing that there are people who have diets that don't include animal products, it just tells a lot about your character. Guys, listen to the noises these animals are making. Do they sound happy? So what we're looking at is they're showing them on market day and they're making them stand in these awkward positions. Holding their necks in these awkward positions. And then they just have this lady that comes over and 100% subjectively is choosing which one is better based on what. I guess quality for meat, how much money they would make. I mean, you, you can see your face. It's not something that's easy for these kids to do because they spend so much time with these animals. Like Noro, Danny's had since November of 2018, has had Noro for almost a year. And, you know, it's difficult. It's sure. not easy. Yep. What's, what's different? What, what about the animal? Well, why are you making yourself out to be the victim in this situation? Oh, it's so hard. You're choosing to be part of 4-H. You have no right to complain about anything. You anything. You don't have to. Even if you've started 4-H and you get to this point, you don't have to go through with it. And why, you, is this, why is this little girl crying? Yeah, it, you can't see because it's in the video, but this little girl is crying while the mom's talking about this. Imagine what she would be doing if she was at the slaughterhouse. I oh think she would be doing more than crying. She'd probably get them to. She'd probably try to get them to stop. I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. So yeah, this little girl is crying, and Keegan is like, "Well, why is she crying?" Like, and I'm. I feel like this little girl, who's about twelve or younger, she knows what she's doing is wrong, and I'm sure she wants to make her mom proud, and she's probably feeling conflicted about that. So it's not, yeah, it's not an uncaring thing. It just, it's what it is. It is what it is. Really, is it? Um, let, let's, let's take it back and think about what you're doing. Oh, what else did she say? It's caring. What did she say? Then? It's not an uncaring thing. So it's what she's saying <laughs> is the kids care and they're sad about it when they send the animals out to be killed. So that makes it okay because they, they feel a little bit sad. Uh, yeah, I, last time I checked, the definition of care is not sending someone to be <laughs> murdered. Yeah. Do we? So hold on. So if I care about my kid, should I send or I care about my companion animal? Should I send them to slaughter if they're, you know, maybe they didn't, you know, maybe they peed on the ground or something, you know, and God forbid they do something else. This is you don't do this to your companion animals. So 
How can you say that it's just, it is what it is? There's no need for this shit. These people, this lady is clearly brainwashing her child because she was brainwashed. It's all programming. These people think that this is a way of life, but it's a fucking dumb tradition. Wake up, change your traditions. Traditions change. People evolve. Use the word evolve and do it. Um, and then, so you raise one animal. <laughs> so you raise one animal and then you move on to the next. It was difficult with Simon. It's going to be difficult with Noro. And that's just the way it is. If it's, if it's so difficult, why not just end the tradition and just send them to sanctuary? I, I, I don't understand. You can get the exact same education without the fucking bullshit death at the end for no reason. And without the lies and propaganda that we have to have meet. You keep saying it is what it is. No, that's, that's not an excuse to hurt others. You're not doing it for survival. And your child is forcing smiles when she looks at you at the same time as she's literally wiping away tears. Yeah, and they say they move on from one to the other, like as if these, these animals are just machines. They're not. They're individuals. They're just like us. They want to live. They want to be with their families. They want to cry. They want to laugh. They want to run around and be happy with, with their friends and family, just like us. Yeah, so why have you, why did you decide to start raising livestock? Well, it's just kind of like, it was just random. It was really random. I was like, I want to do a market student. Like, just like sitting on the couch. I want to do a market student. Mm -hmm. That's what started it all. Right, so that's how it started. And why do you continue to do it? It's just fun. Like, it's just something more to do. I like it. It's fun. What are your goals? My goals. Why are you doing it? My goals? are to be able to raise my own livestock and my doing it so I can raise my own livestock in the future. Yeah. Raise your own livestock. Hmm. Sounds like programming to me. So this mother has clearly convinced her child that animal abuse is okay and not only is it okay, but it's a career path. And it sounds like she just literally doesn't have anything better to do. That's what yeah, she said. Exactly. <laughs> um and and she's saying it's fun well like what about five seconds ago when you were crying because you're sending your animal off to be killed yeah and do you think it's fun for the animal to go on the livestock truck and go to a slaughterhouse and get their throat slit i don't think that would be very fun raise my own livestock yeah so that's the purpose of these livestock is for these farm kids that are going to be farmers they're going to feed the world you know, everybody, not everybody, the majority of the population eats meat and, you know, we need somebody to raise it and we need kids that are going to raise good quality animals for the marketplace. So Danny, for instance, you know, when she grows up, she wants to have a kettle farm and she wants to raise livestock. So this is a great way for her to start doing that. Interesting. They say to feed the world. True. We need farmers to feed the world, but let's let's go back to the science here you gotta remember science these animals are dying for no reason zero we don't have to eat meat this lady is brainwashing her child into thinking that oh she needs to raise good meat for for people to eat to feed the world and she even said oh not everybody eats meat well yeah uh, most of the most of the world eats meat but that's because they're programmed and they don't know what goes on behind the scenes clearly this daughter doesn't know what's going on at the slaughterhouse or else she wouldn't be doing it hell no i don't think she would be and like why are you telling this like 12 year old or 10 year old or however old she is what she wants to do when she grows up like, not, not to mention, she wants her to be part of a dying industry. I don't know if you know, um, lady, but eating meat, dairy, eggs, fish, everything, it's going down. People, the demand is going down. Unfortunately, the supply is staying where it is, but that's a whole nother conversation. And just but, the profitability for like, you know, she would probably not be running a very big farm unless she has like a huge inheritance or something so just the ability to even make a living if you care about her well-being at all like this is not what you would want to guide her into doing yeah how many how much more food can you grow on a plot of land than than meat i think it's something like 30 times as much 
So yeah, let that sink in. You're teaching your kid to be part of a system that is 100% inefficient, 100%. So, all in all, for me, this has um, been a great experience. You know, like I said, it's not it's something that's easy to do. It's not that you take a life lightly or anything like that. It's just, it is what it is. And, you know, everybody eats, not everyone. I'm going to quit saying everybody. It's not everybody. But a lot of people eat cheeseburgers. A lot of people eat lamb. A lot of people eat goat. A lot of people eat bacon. And I quit chewing on my shoe. Interesting. So she's saying that it's, you know, we don't take a life easy, but why, why, why aren't you telling your kid that you don't even have to do this? Why aren't you fully educating your child about this stuff? Why not? Don't leave out the dirty details. Don't leave out the dirty details at the slaughterhouse. Tell them about everything and let them make their own educated decision. And, you know, that's where it comes from. So today I am going... Yeah, that's what we're... That's what our goal is for our 4-H club is to get as many kids as possible in front of as many animals as possible so that they can learn how to properly take care of them and really properly care for them. What? <laughs> It just, it's its pretty amazing how they forget about, let's say, quote unquote, the elephant in the room. Like, yeah. where's the S word? Slaughter. Why aren't we talking about this stuff? You want to get kids in front of as many animals as you can? Yeah, because you want to desensitize them to the fucking hell that they have to go through. But without showing them the actual slaughter. Yeah. Take them. Why aren't you doing field trips to slaughterhouses? Why isn't 4-H sponsoring field trips to them? Huh? <laughs> yeah, Please exactly. tell me. Oh, and here's another thing. Why aren't they? Why aren't they telling kids? Oh, why don't you get into killing animals yeah. and working at slaughterhouses? Oh no, we can't do that because that's for the minorities and for yeah. other people that that's, that's that are for the abused. immigrants. Exactly. <laughs> this shit is ridiculous. Why aren't they trying to tell them to go? Well. If, if eating meat is feeding the world, or if raising meat is feeding the world, then why don't you want to be part of the, the killing of them? Exactly. Why aren't you telling your kid, oh, well, you know, you don't have to raise them. You can also just go into work at a slaughterhouse. It's a great industry. You know, there's <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, domestic violence, suicide, drug abuse. Yeah. Why, why aren't they talking about that, huh? PTSD, PITS. Yeah, I, I wonder why. All right, so now that we're done with that bullshit... I'm looking at an article, um, it's five years old, but it's from raisedinabarn.org, and it's titled, Goodbye Isn't Easy, But It's Part of Life, and it's about 4-H. And this article starts out like this. When showing a market animal, goodbye is inevitable. Recently, I've seen a lot of these precious and difficult goodbye moments that have been circulating around social media. My heart goes out to each and every one of those kids, but don't cry. As a stock show kid, you make an animal's life the best it can be. You provide and care for them, and it teaches you just how valuable life really is. Keegan's over there face palming. Are you fucking serious right now? The best that make to you make an animal's <laughs> life the best it can be. Really? Sending them to slaughter at two years <laughs> is the best life that they can have? What about the other 18 years of life that they should have been living? So fucked. I just, I don't even have words. And, 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 and oh, kids, but don't cry. Really, but they want to cry. They don't want us, they don't want these animals to die. They love animals. Kids love animals. They, mm -hmm. they don't want to send them to slaughter. And if kids don't love animals or you know, if they want to hurt them, they're they're probably going to be a serial killer just based on research. And and <laughs> what are what what harm are we doing to these kids that teaching them that it's okay to love someone and then kill them? Yeah. For an unnecessary reason. It's confusing. It it's makes very sense. confusing. <laughs> it's difficult to raise an animal that is only going to get to be with you for about a year or so. Market animals are difficult to raise due to the fact we all know what happens to them at the end of show season. Don't list, let this discourage you from choosing that steer though. Oh, just because you know you know that they're going to die. Don't 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 sweat it. It's okay. It's a part of life. No. Death is a part of life, but not premature death and unhumane death. 
Okay, let's get that straight. This shit can never be humane. Ever. And by the way, this article is sprinkled with various pictures people sent in themselves of them crying and holding their animal before they're... Literally they're... bawling their eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Let's read that whole thing. It gets worse, if you can believe me. So, as a market animal, they have one purpose in life. That purpose is to provide food for people around the world. Instead of that market animal living its life out with a ton of other cows stuck in a corral all day, you gave that animal the opportunity to be a show animal. It got to see travel, see amazing places, get tons of love and affection, and get the best treatment possible. You gave that show animal the best life it could have had. Your animal got the best feed, best hay, and was never lonely. You were there, and whether you knew it or not, you made that animal's time on earth the greatest. It is a privilege for any stock show kid to show a market animal. Yeah, at the end they have to go, but you have to look at it like this. It was an honor for you to take that animal in and help it have a better life than it could have had. So let's get this, so <laughs> let, let, let's figure this out here. Okay, so you're raising an animal, bring them into the existence, bring it into existence for the sole purpose to eat them. But then you're also saying that it was an honor for you to take that animal in and help them to have a better life than it could have had. How do you know? You don't, you're, you're sentencing them to one life. Why, why not, if you send them to a sanctuary, I think we both can agree, or everybody listening here can agree that that is a better life. A two-year lifespan is not better than a 20-year one. Yeah, it's, I just, it's so, I don't even have words. Like, my brain is shutting down. I don't think I even have words. Love and affection? Really? And they were never alone? What happens at night? Do, do they sleep with the animals in their room? What happens in the slaughterhouse? The kid's not there for them, keeping them to be not lonely when they're having their throats. I mean... And, and let's get this one thing straight here. Animals are not food. They're not food. They are animals. They are individuals. They are not food. We do not live out in the wild. We don't sniff each other's asses when we come to yeah. say hello. We are not lions. We do not eat and and process these animals with with the God-given tools that we were given. I, I keep saying God-given. I'm not religious. But they're not using the tools that they were given. They're, we don't have claws. We don't naturally have canine Naturally given. Like natu yeah, naturally yeah. given. Exactly. This has nothing to do with nature. And they're not food. We're making them out to be food. These animals want to live. And how dare them say you gave that animal the opportunity to be a show animal. We were just watching that video and these goats were trying to run away from these kids that were trying to make them stand in awkward positions. How is that a privilege for the animal? And, and you got to remember, the end of their life is the same, whether they're a show animal or whether they're in with a ton of cows stuck in a corral all day. They all go to slaughter. They all get killed well, be be well before their lifespan. The only difference between a 4-H animal being slaughtered and any other animal being slaughtered is that the 4-H animal shows up blow-dried and clean. Okay, so moving on in the article. Life is short and precious. When you show or deal with any animal, you will learn that. For most animals, you spend a short amount of your life with them, but they spend all of their lives with you. They look at you as a friend, cook, caretaker. They teach you how to be selfless and strong. Kids that show market animals are the strongest of them all. What definition of strength are you using that you define strength as prying on the weak and the innocent? That is not strength. That is weakness. And the sad part is, I'm pretty sure an adult wrote this. Yeah, and they're saying, oh, they look at you as a friend and a cook? Really? You think the animal is like, oh, I can't wait to get slaughtered and get eaten by you. Oh, I'm so happy to be in this life. I think they meant like feed, like when you feed them, they're, you're their cook. Oh. It's just you're right. Weird... That's true. You're yeah, right. Yeah, but like... But either way, <laughs> maybe that's my vegan mind going there, but come on. And when they say life is short and precious, it's you're cutting their life short by... I don't even know the fraction. I told you, it's about normally cows, if they're raised for beef in a factory farm, it's about 18 months. For grass-fed beef, it's about two months. It's about two years, 24, 24 months. 
These cows would normally live 15 to 20 years in the wild. Yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and it says they teach you how to be selfless. Okay, the actual people who are selfless are the ones that work at sanctuaries, vegan sanctuaries, and work, like, just off of donations and don't make any money. Those are the people that are selfless. They're being selfless to take care of animals. Then they're caring for the animals in their best interest. Yeah. These people are caring for the animals in their own best interest, not the animals' best interest. It's the opposite of selfless. It is selfish because you're doing it for the money, the gold buckles. And because you like the taste. Yeah. And you think that taste is more valuable than life. Let's be, let's be honest here. That's just ridiculous. It's hard to tie that steer up to a fence and say goodbye or to load that barrow in the trailer for the last time. Tears, hugs, and pictures will happen. Your emotions will get the best of you as you say goodbye to an animal you raised for a year. But just remember that you changed that animal's life. And this next part's in bold. <laughs> um, that was a privilege for you and a gift to that market animal. Uh, you changed their life by ending it. I mean, I'll give you that. You did change their life by ending it. And I like how they say the mo emotions will get the best of you. Like, oh, you should conquer your emotions. Like, And it's funny because they keep saying, like, they know all this stuff. And they're just blatantly putting it off as a necessity. When we all know it's not a necessity. You can live and thrive on a plant-based diet. I've been doing it for three years. Alicia's been doing it for almost two, right? Over two what? years? That, wait, what? <laughs> vegan. How long you've been vegan? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be vegan for two years in February. Yeah, so clearly... uh I'm not dead. Clearly, I'm talking yeah, to you right I'm not now. Dead. I think we have this, you know, Elisa has this podcast. We're on this episode right now. Uh, yeah, you don't need to eat meat. There are people who have been vegan for 30 and 40 years. Yeah, we have, we have friends. We have activist friends mm -hmm. that have literally been vegan most of their life. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly all of those emotions you are going through. I grew up showing steers and it was the hardest thing in the world. Them pretending like they're the victim in the situation. Yep. I enjoyed all of those moments spent working with those steers and dreaded walking them to the tire area and telling them goodbye. Life isn't easy or fair. It's really not fair when you're murdering or when you're being murdered. Like, that's really not fair. No, especially <laughs> when you're, you've been, you know, you have this caretaker who's supposed to take care of you. And you love them, and you create a bond with them. These animals create a bond with their with their owner, and in a certain way, they do care for them. But it's all about it's all for the wrong reasons. That's what these mm -hmm. people don't understand. Mm -hmm. They it may be love, but it's not love when you send them to slaughter. It's not love when you're loving them and caring for them only to raise them for meat. Exactly. You're not doing it for the best interest of the animal, and you're and worse off, you're making yourself a victim. <laughs> Why? Get a new fucking career. Get a new hobby. This is ridiculous. Showing a market animal helped you learn that lesson at an early age. In other words, we indoctrinate children before they're old enough to really, like, be able to reason. Yeah. And, <laughs> and because we use praise, because every kid, all they want is love and praise and just affection from their parents. And a lot of parents in this world withhold it from their kids or it's conditional and a lot of kids and i can relate to this having grown up riding horses they think the only way that they can get what should be just theirs is by herding animals it's not only hard to say goodbye to show animals but also all of the barn animals a good horse is hard to lose because you know they don't send the horses to slaughter because, you know, horses are useful. You can use them for entertainment, right? They are great friends and helped us all feel free on the back of them. I mean, yeah, when I used to ride horses and I would run on the dirt road, I felt free. But, like, that was at the cost of taking away the freedom of someone else. So it wasn't true, authentic freedom. A good animal is something that we all hate to lose and it happens on farms and ranches everywhere. You can't control every aspect of life. But you can control whether or not you breed them for slaughter and send them to slaughter. Yeah, you can control your auto autonomy. 
you're you're an auto you're you're your own person you don't have to do this stuff they're trying to say that accidental deaths or unplanned illnesses are like a justification for planning deaths when we don't need to life is short and precious things will happen that we can't control you can control not sending them to the slaughterhouse. Stop acting like you can't. And if life is so short and precious, why? And which is in bold, by the way, then why not send them to a sanctuary where their life will be a lot longer and exactly. more precious? Death isn't something fun and it never will be. You can spend all of your time focusing on life ending or you can spend your time living life to the fullest. What about the animals? Don't you think they want to live life to the fullest? Like, Don't you think they want to live more than two years? <laughs> Seriously. So here's the thing about 4-H. When they get to the point where it's time to sell them off, they, they're incentivized to sell the animal because, well, for one thing, they're, they tell the kids... Like, oh, what are you what are you gonna do with the money once you get the money? And they make it into like a ooh, positive, ooh, can't wait to see how much money I'll get for the animal. And the thing too is to get involved in 4-H, the parent has to take out a lease on the animal and, you know, basically buy the animal or lease the animal in the beginning. And so it incentivizes the parents to want to get their money back when it's time to sell. So even if, and I'm sure there's loads of kids who get to the end and know that it's wrong and don't want to slaughter them, you know that the parents are going to be like, God damn it, Sonny, I leased this animal and I want my money back. You better, we got to sell him anyway. Like, <laughs> I just, I feel like that's how they, they would talk in that situation. <laughs> but um, on a more positive note, I have an article here from the Dodo um about a a young kid that he raised an animal a pig for 4-H and he actually decided this is wrong I'm not going to do this and well I'll just read the article <laughs> so when Bruno Barba first saw Lola he could never have guessed how much the young pig would affect him she's changed my life so much and I just don't, and I just haven't been able to look at anything the same anymore, Bruno told the dodo. Now the 16 year old high school student is paying her back with the ultimate gift, the gift of life. It's funny because in that other article, they tried to say that the ultimate gift was giving them this short life of two years and then sending them to slaughter. <laughs> okay, so Bruno first met Lola when he purchased her through the Future Farmers of America program at Fullerton Union High School in Fullerton, California. That's what FFA is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The school's FFA program has a farm lot attached to the school, and students are encouraged to purchase animals who are then homed on the FFA campus. As in 4-H programs, FFA students are responsible for all aspects of animal care, from feeding and cleaning to learning to walk with their animals as if before a judging panel. They then take them to the Orange County Fair before sending their hand-raised animals off to slaughter. But for Bruno and Lola, it was love at first sight. The young pig quickly took to the boy and would eagerly grunt when he came to visit her each day. She was like my best friend, Bruno said. And as their friendship progressed, Bruno's feelings quickly began to change. She's just made a huge impact on me by making me realize that they're just like us, Bruno said of Lola. They have the same feelings as anyone else, and they don't deserve to get slaughtered. The more affection Bruno developed for Lola, the more she loved him right back. There was this one time where I was just feeling really sad about all the rest of the animals, and I started crying, and she noticed I was crying, Bruno said. She was inside this little play area. I was sitting down on the ground. She came toward me and I started petting her and she just flopped on the ground so I could pet her belly. As the weeks progressed, Bruno became more and more depressed about the fates of Lola and the other pigs. The breaking point came when he witnessed one of the other pigs being slaughtered. I think that's a key in this story, right, Keegan? Because I'm sure these other kids do not have the opportunity to witness the animals being slaughtered. No, and it's a shame to the animals and the kids because they these these parents, these people that run 4-H, they know. 
mm -hmm. because they've probably seen the footage and oh it's too far back for them oh well i'm you know this age and i can't change now like no anybody can change but like yeah this is just insane it clearly shows that they're keeping these things this footage and this process you know to get them onto the table to get these dead body parts on your table they have to go get cut up somewhere you know exactly. why aren't we showing this stuff exactly most children in the ffa program choose to hire a butcher to kill their pigs and the butcher will come right to campus to do it the pigs are killed on the ffa lot right next to the high school and in clear view of any students who happen to be passing nearby they slaughter the animals on the farm that we raise the animals at i witnessed it and it was heartbreaking for me, Bruno said. I couldn't handle it. I think any normal person, like, who is not seriously lacking empathy wouldn't be able to handle it. So this article ends by the boy taking the pig to Farm Sanctuary, which is a vegan animal sanctuary. And Farm Sanctuary says they get calls all the time from people in FFA and 4-H second-guessing, like, you know, sending their animals off to be murdered. And so this pig got to live out the rest of their life in peace and without harm. And then the boy in the story ends up going vegan. So it's like a really beautiful, happy ending. And the boy now says that what FFA and 4-H are doing to these animals is really the ultimate betrayal. And that's the reality of what it is. So I think we're going to start wrapping up our episode today. Do you have any final thoughts, Keegan? No, I mean, I just, it's just, it's great to, you know, end on a good note. Um, this guy and his mom both went vegan now um, because of this experience. And I think, you know, I think 4-H is actually doing, you know, they're actually doing their self, themselves and th a disservice because yeah. actually what they're doing by putting this out there, they're actually giving these kids like a chance to change, which is a good thing for us and the humans and for them or animals and for them but you know I, it just goes to show how like blatantly like dishonest and how they're just trying to deceive people but it, it's just it, it's funny because you know they're and actually they sensitize should, them like don't <laughs> cry like keep it in it is what it is this is just how it is circle of life like all that bullshit nonsense yeah but it's actually it's just funny they they actually don't know the harm they're doing to their own movement by actually promoting this shit because you know there there's a very small niche of people that actually would do this stuff exactly um people that are already in you know the not a, i want i want to say abusive hold households because we don't know but like it's certainly abusive towards animals, that's yeah. for sure. Well, it is toward the children, too. And, and it's more likely, like, if you're teaching animal abuse, like, the whole entire... Because I, I come from a family of abuse, and I used to be taught to abuse horses in the way that they taught me to ride them and stuff like that. So, it makes sense. And also, guys, sorry we couldn't get to the rescue story today. We didn't want to make this episode too long. We got into this topic, like, for a longer time than I thought it would take. But definitely stay tuned for future episodes. Maybe we'll dedicate a whole episode to rescue stories. And we can also look up some rescue stories. Because there's so many out there of people just realizing that animals don't deserve to be killed and they don't need to so it's like why are we doing it yeah once you figure out once you realize that these animals are being killed for a reason that isn't necessary it makes it pretty easy to to see it objectively and see how cruel it is exactly and let's let's be honest they should change their motto it's not education it's indoctrination mm -hmm. that's what 4-h is all about exactly all right, guys, so if you're not vegan yet, sign up for Veganuary, veganuary.com, free help and support. And if it's not January anymore, there's always Challenge 22 that you can sign up for. Free help. They tell you what to eat, what to buy at the store, what to have at restaurants. And definitely listen to the TEDx talk, Every Argument Against Veganism. Watch Dominion, the documentary. Watch Earthlings, the documentary. They're both free on YouTube. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye. See ya. Veganism. I feel like this 
is the best video on the